Okay, welcome back to my channel, Fashionably She. I am Kyla Thomas. You guys, I don't even know where to start. But if you're here, you're either here because your page has been disabled from IG or you found out what happened to me and you're just curious on what the heck happened. All I can say is me and IG, we had a like a horrible breakup, a really bad breakup, and it was not initiated by me. Where do I begin? This has been a roller coaster ride, and here's the reason why. So it's Friday. Let me get comfortable. I need to get really comfortable. So Friday. I had reached a big goal for me. Friday, the May 10th, Friday, May 10th, late at night, I reached 10K. And that's big for me because actually 10K was my goal for the end of this year. Last year, I had a 5K goal. This year, it was 10K to, to gain another 5K this year. I hit it Friday night and I was so excited. And I, the excitement one is because I did it organically. No, no buying bots or buying followers or um, buying likes or whatever. I don't do that. Anyone who go on my page, you'll see I keep, if I got two likes, it's gonna show. I don't hide likes, I don't do any of that. And not to say anything is wrong with that because people do different things for whatever different reasons. For me, I'm big on, I'm a data person. Big on metrics, big on data, and big on track and progress. So I like numbers to be visible to me um, so that I can track progress, what's working, what's not working. And so the low engagement post really um, help, helps me more than the high engagement post because the high engagement posts work, right? The low engagement post teaches you what doesn't work so i and for me the reason that buying followers would never work for me is because i like to know whether or not i'm doing well or not and to me if you're buying followers you can't really that doesn't tell if your content is really touching people to make them want to follow you so i'm here or i was on ig just really truly i want to um like have my own passion, have my passion, but also share my passion with the world. And sometimes your passion is not the world's passion and that's okay. But the way that for me, I was measuring if it's something the world wants to see or not is through how I grow. And so, you know, folks told me everything on Instagram is fake. It's, you know, everybody buy fake followers, fake likes, blah, 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 blah. You'll never get to where you want to go trying to do it organically. And because I didn't really care about, I mean, of course, everybody care about growing and, and getting numbers, but I didn't care to lie to myself about my progress. That wasn't a thing for me. So 10K for me to hit it organically was a huge deal. I snapshot it on my phone. I put it up here because I was going to, let my sister know the next day. I didn't want to let her know that night because just as fast as I was growing followers, I was losing followers too. I, some days I would lose like 40, 50 followers. And so I didn't know if it was going to drop right back down. So why share, right? So I snapshot to have in my phone. And I want to say this. So I've been on a gram, I believe since 2017. So it took me a long time to reach 10K, a very long time to me. I haven't been doing a fashion thing for that long, maybe, maybe two years. But, and so I had a small foundation already. The thing that really grew my um, fashion when I transitioned from books to fashion was when I went to Fashion Week. When I went to Fashion Week, I believe I gained like 3,500 to 4,000 followers. It was, it was huge. It was a huge number. And um, I think a lot of it was because it was excitement, right? And different for me and, and folks to see me do things at a different, like not an everyday look at, um, 
not an everyday look is what, of course, I'm at Fashion Week, so I'm bringing it. Um, so anyway, I like the posts did really, really good numbers. One of them, I think, went as high as 75000 maybe even more now. But, but the content did well. I was able to grow what some people may think is quickly, but it really wasn't quickly. It, it was because I've been consistently posting for a while on my page. But I will admit that Fashion Week was the thing that really started getting my reach out. Needless to say, I reached 10K organically. And I woke up the next morning to just look to make sure I was still at 10K before I shared the news with my sister. And I got this message. That my account was suspended. And so I'm like, what? I didn't even believe it. I just thought I was still kind of waking up. I was delusional. It didn't make sense. And so I just kept looking at it, kept looking at it, kept reading it, and it was real. So I immediately, there's a button that say appeal. You can appeal. So I immediately appealed in 15 minutes or so. It maybe have been less than 15 minutes, five or 10, five minutes maybe. I got an email saying, hey, we got your appeal. We reviewed it. Unfortunately, we agree that with the decision that was made, your account is... What did they say? Your account is, um, you, you've broken our community guidelines because your account is promoting or selling counterfeit products. What? Anybody who knows me knows that counterfeit products is not my thing. Anybody that can look at my page can tell I don't do counterfeit things and hey, to each his own, just not my ministry, I should say. And so it was just, it didn't make sense. So I kept reading it like, what, what, what? And I can't remember if it says somebody, re I, I think it says somebody re reported me. And I'm like, who, nobody would report me for this. Like, what? So immediately I knew it was a mistake. So I did a couple of things because I know you guys want to know, what did you do? I did a couple of things outside of, and I couldn't even control. It's like tears was coming down my eyes. And I'm saying it now and smiling, but I remember seeing a guy on Instagram who lost all of his content and he was in tears. And I was like, to myself, judging, like, why is he crying over? Like, you've been, like, like it didn't make sense that he was crying over the stuff down. Baby. It made sense when I was, them tears was rolling. And so I realized it's not about your content or not about Instagram, you know, your content been down. It's about the time you spent, the money you spent, it being your passion project and it to be taken wrongly. So if something, somebody does something bad, you expect a consequence from it. But when you're doing things the right way, you're not lying, cheating, stealing for stuff. You're just doing it the right way. You took your time. You built this, whatever it is you built, and it's taken away wrongly, a lie. It's like, no, it, it just, it's a gut punch. So I can't even remember. I think I called my twin. Um, I was devastated. I, I, I remember texting my two cousins, Amber and Rochelle. I remember reaching out to my close, close, close girlfriends. And I was devastated. And one of my friends say, it got to be one of three people who could have done this to you. Reach out to them and see how they respond. And I was like, I'm not about to do that. Um, because I, I, I was just like, no, but what she said was powerful because the one thing out of all of this that is just, uh -huh. I don't even know what to say about it, but the silence from some people, um, and the words 
from other, well, actually, I'm not going to even go into that. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into that particularly for a reason. I must stay positive with this or not, not positive, but I don't want to go down that path. Let me talk about, but someone or something did this to me, someone or something. So I'm saying something, if it was a fluke or someone, and I, I will say this, one of my friends say, you don't even have enemies. Like who could do this for, uh, to you? And I was like, I know I don't have enemies. And listen, one thing I learned is enemies come in a form of friends sometimes. I'll leave it as that. So what did I do? Outside of being devastated, I started, I talked to some folks, reached out to some folks. My cousin immediately said, hey, I have a friend who worked there. Let me hit her up. She can help you. I reached out to another cousin who has a good friend who worked there to see if she can help me. I reached out on, and this is in a matter of days, right? Um, but I reached out to, cause every day I was thinking, okay, maybe this, maybe this. I reached out to Adam. I'm gonna call him Adam M. He's on Instagram. He, he's like the head of Instagram, I think. And he, he, he works with content creators. He, everything he does, he's running like the threads now, but I had just commented on one of his posts because he was talking about how they're doing good things for small creators and how they're extending their reach. And so I commented like, yes, it's working. Because again, my reach, post Fashion Week, my reach was not getting out. After Fashion Week, it kind of slowed down. So I was like, oh, okay, this was truly a Fashion Week kind of push. But then it started pushing. Like late, the last two to three weeks, there's one post and I'll put up, I got 190 followers off of one post. I didn't think that was normal at all. I would have thought, I would have thought somebody who was growing, how I was growing within the last two weeks was buying followers. Like, because when you're, you don't understand when you're growing slow, you can't see that other people are growing fast. It doesn't make sense to you. All you know is that, hey, the algorithm is, is, is not pushing my stuff out or I'm not doing what needs to happen to have the algorithm push it out, whatever it, it may be. And so you don't, you only know your story, your testimony. So I was the person who reach wasn't really going out. So when I started getting 190 followers off of one post, and it's not like I got it off of a bunch of one post, but that it was working for me. The algorithm was working on my behalf. So I reached out to him and I, uh, Adam, and I sent a message like, Hey, I'm a new creator. I just hit 10 K. I just commented on one of your posts saying how things were working for me. My account got disabled, basically help. I sent out help sirens, like help. I looked on LinkedIn to see who all he was um, affiliated with. And this was after I researched on YouTube. Cause when I researched on YouTube, everybody who this happened to say, you have to get verified so that you can get with tech support. I didn't, I always thought the people who got the check just wanted that check. I didn't know that that's how you get connected to tech support. That's the way you could prevent this from even happening to you because you're already verified. So somebody can't make a false claim against you. So, um, from YouTube, they say, go get verified on like, if you have another account, which I had a private account with about 500 followers. So small following private account, hadn't used it in years. I uh, got verified on that account. I opened up a tech support ticket. I kept getting back the same response, like basically go to this link to try to get your account back. I had already went to that link. I had already appealed. I had already got the decision back that they said my, my site was like pulled down. My, my page was gone that once you appeal, just to let you know. So before you click appeal, once you appeal and then that decision is made, that's when they pull your site down totally. Before I appealed, you can still see my post was up there. My page wasn't showing the content, but you can still see I had those posts. After I appealed and that decision was made, it had zero posts. That's when I think, that's that's when the tears started rolling. When I realized, when I read that message, and I'm going to put it up here, that's it. It's gone and it's not coming back. This is a final decision. That's when it hit like a ton of bricks. So after that, I opened up the ticket um, contacted tech support. I had eight to 12 tickets. 
everybody kept giving me the same response. It's like a copy paste response, the same one. Like basically click these links, go through these links. And I kept saying, it's not, listen guys, I'm ch telling you, I clicked the link, I appealed, I did all of that. I need someone to escalate this. This is the wrong decision. I counterfeit and Kyla of Fashion Bleach, she don't go together. We don't go together at all. Like, so I kept trying to say, this is wrong. It's a wrong decision. Understand you copy paste in this or whatever. Give me a live rep. Give me someone to work with. I need a live rep. So I finally got maybe eight, nine, ten ticket, got escalated to a manager, the lady. Cause, and I was even saying, if you have any kind of heart, just please just send it up because the responses kept saying, you, you violated the terms. You did this. You did. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing is what I kept trying to like get across to these people, but it's just people that just, I don't want to say low level people because that's not, that's not what, it, but people who are like entry level who really, I guess, not really passionate about what they do. So all they do is copy and paste and send you the same message. No matter what you are saying, they're not taking that in. And some, I'm going to put up some of my posts. I'm going off. I'm like, you're not listening to me. I keep telling you I didn't do anything wrong. I don't have counterfeit products. I didn't, um, uh, I, I didn't do this stuff. I even, my last post was a Gucci unboxing. I sent in the receipt. After the appeal and I got the decision back because I'm like, maybe they thought someone thought this was fake. Send in, send in a receipt to show pr proof of purchase. And so nothing was working. Then that's when I went to LinkedIn to see who all Adam was friends with. I was like, listen, Adam may not get my message. Adam may think I'm crazy. Let me see if any of his friends have a heart. Maybe they'll get my message. So about five of his friends, because I knew I couldn't deal with the, the entry level folks because they were just copy pasting the same message. I knew I needed to get somebody who like strategically thinks, have a vision, know that everything is in black and white, know that there's mistakes that happen. No. And so I looked at some of his friends, the high up folks, and I sent them all messages, about four or five people. I know they think I'm delusional, but I just sent them a message just telling them who I am, kind of a little bit about my story and just ask for help. So I don't know. So it was my cousin um, and my cousin-in-law. They both had inside, you know, people there. My cousin-in-law friend, I don't know if she did anything because, well, actually, that's not even important. But my cousin friend, and I'm not going to say the name just out of respect for privacy. I, it, could, it may have been her that, because, wow, okay, and I haven't said this. I got my account back. Today, this is a week later, seven days later, I got my account back. I don't know how, I think it's my cousin's contact. It could be the last, um, I'll put up here the last message I sent, told him I was hiring an attorney for my intellectual property back because it had got to a point with all of the back and forth in the chats with the agents where I say, listen, I don't even care about getting back on your platform at this point, but I want my intellectual property. I want my data. Like, give me my data back. If you do not give me my data back, I am seeking legal help. And I know everybody thinks that is extreme, but from my, uh, my mom kept saying from day one, my mom was like, get a lawyer, get a lawyer. My mom was like, no, get a lawyer. And I, I was thinking that's a bit much extreme. But um, I have a friend who's an attorney, so I reached out to her, talked to her. And listen, I wanted my data back. So I don't know. I, I will say this. I did all of the responses from the YouTube videos after they told me to get verified. I don't know if I, yeah, I think I said that. Get verified, open up your case, and then it was like move on. So today, today is, well, I'm saying today, it was Saturday. I moved on. I put up a re I, I made a reel on Friday, went to spa day with my friends, made a reel, and I moved on on my account with the 500 followers and I posted it. And so, so many people, I didn't say this, so many people called me and poured into me. So many people. And I'm probably, I'm, I may play the message if I haven't already played it in the intro. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you.
the audacity, the tenacity, the will, the desire that it takes to start over from scratch when you had a good thing going, the average person, the average person cannot and will not do that. But you, Kyla, you are not average. And I believe that the best is yet to come. What you saw with Fashionably She will not compare to what you're going to see with I Am Kyla Thomas. I believe that with a strong passion. I'm so proud of you. It was many friends that poured into me. One friend caught me at the right day, right time, because things are stages, right? My In the beginning, my ride or dies was like, you know, oh, don't stop, whatever. I'm mad at that. I don't care what nobody say. I'm stopping. I don't like Instagram. I am done. But over the days, the more folks were calling like, hey, you know, you're a natural. This is your thing, blah, blah, blah. It started to sink in. But my one friend called me probably day five into this and say some very powerful words. Day six, I posted to just move on because the one thing that I realized, I thought about my why. And when I thought about my why, you know, I had did or am still doing, like I am in corporate America. I don't talk about it a lot because I, I want to keep the two separate, but I've done my thing in corporate America and still doing my thing in corporate America. But I still have a passion inside of me in an industry that I did not pursue, which is fashion. I've raised my kids. I've, you know, sacrificed for my job. I've worked longer. I, I've done it all. And so now it's like time for Kyla. Give back to yourself what you've given to everyone else. And so I thought about my why. And my why never had anything to do with followers is what I realized. My why was always because it was something that, one, I'm passionate about, obviously. But two, it was a work-life balance thing for me. It doing something that I'm passionate about got me from spending way too many hours working because that's what I was doing. I was spending a lot of time working. And so it was work-life balance and it was fulfilling a passion that I had that in an avenue that I never pursued. So when I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, this is why I had never had anything to do with followers or numbers. So why would you stop? just because now you've lost all of your followers. And a friend told me, a one of the friends one day called me and she was like, a pause is not a stop right now. You have a pause. Cause I was saying, no, I'm done. I'm stopping at least on Instagram. I was going to keep up with you too. And so my friend was like, this is a pause. This isn't a stop. A pause doesn't mean stop. And so, and I just reflected on that. And I was like, you know what? Right. Let me take a pause, digest what is happening, why it's happening. And then kind of just feel this thing out. Another friend called, poured into me, and then I was like, you know what? Push forward. It was it was some really powerful words. And actually, a lot of it was repetitive to what other people were saying. So it was just it just solidified the deal. Um so I made the post this morning. I made the post this morning, which is Saturday, it was Saturday. And within 15 minutes after making a post, I, or not 15 minutes, I shouldn't give it a minute. So within minutes after making a post, I realized my old account was back up. And I really, and so if you, if when folks say, and when I say like, how did all this happen? I really believe it was a mindset thing that I finally got that mindset and, and a lot because I'm, I'm very, very, like the Lord did this, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And what one, one person told me, the Lord didn't take this away. The Lord doesn't take things from you. God doesn't take things from you. So, but I feel like what happened happened for a reason, strong believer in that. And so I felt like, okay, I knew the gems that I got through this time. I knew the, my eyes are clear now. So it's so many revelations that I have on things. Even I spent time while I was off of IG, just sitting in my living room, looking through my coffee table books. I have a bunch of coffee table books. That's my thing. 
And I didn't even realize I hadn't opened up half of them. I purchased the books because I like them, how they look, but I never opened the pages and went through them. On this break, I sat down one day and I just sat in my living room and I just picked up a book, a coffee table book. And just the serenity of, this is peaceful. And looking at beautiful things, beautiful pictures, um, just, it was eye-opening. A lot of other stuff I did that I hadn't done in a long time. I used to be big at soaking in a tub, and then I switched to taking showers, and so I started back soaking in a tub. Started getting consistent with exercising daily. Just a lot of good things that I needed to just kind of get back to. I got back to it. And I'm going to continue to get back to it. I'm not going to concentrate on one platform. That's a lesson. I'm not going to not save my data. That's a lesson. So many lessons. But if you are here and this has happened to you, and I'm not going to say don't worry. That's hard to not do. But if you've li you probably watched a million other YouTubes, including mine, just know that when people say start over, I think the best thing to do after you digest it and go through your circle of grief to know that starting over is so much, so much peace that comes with that. And so it was that start over for me that made me really put myself in check and really go back to the why I was doing what I was doing and leave the ego and leave all of the superficial stuff behind. So um, that's my story. I have, I'm maybe somewhere through here, I put up my beautiful cousins one day through this, the next day after I lost my page, they came over and they had some 10K, they had a 10K balloon, gold balloons. It was sitting in my living room. They wrote me this beautiful message, each of them in a card that brought me to tears. It was just such a beautiful thing. My like my little cousins just I love them so much. Um so anyway, that's what happened and I'm back fashionably she on IG. I still going to keep my I am Kyla Thomas page. That's my personal page. I'm just going to still keep that up. Um cuz that's my OG one of my friends were like, this is the OG page. And that even that gave me something. When people were reposting my old page, but when she said, this is the OG page, it made me really remember, this is where I started. I started here and, you know, I got there and nothing is wrong with if you got to start over and build back up. So hopefully I've helped you. If I haven't and you're still in grief and you want to talk and chat, um, just leave me a comment. Trust me, I will respond because I know what it feels like to not get a response. I did somewhere in the process outside of reaching out to folks on LinkedIn just yesterday and today I reached out to some of the creators that that I had a relationship with um, that, you know, just to let them know that I was over on I Am Kyla Thomas because I did want to keep those relationships. Some of the ladies that I met and we had a, just a true connection and even some ladies that I never met in person but that we're, you know, friends, um, I say friends, I, I use that word loosely, but we're um, creative friends, maybe I can say, that um, I, you know, wanted to keep those relationships. So I did reach out to some folks, just, you know, and some of the, those folks. It, it, oh, I reached out to the brands that I met in New York, some of the other brands that I wear all the time to see them not have an ego and follow me on an account with like 500 followers meant a lot to me. Um, I'm going to put some of the brands that, that did that. That was, and you know, you want to say like, well, that's not a big thing. It's a big thing. There's so many creators that just look at your following. And if you don't have that following, they won't follow you back. And so to see those designers who I made a, um, that, that, that I met had contact with that they know I support them um, and repost them, like their stuff. They are on my list if I haven't purchased yet to purchase from. To see them like not care about a number and follow me back, not care about a page with nothing on it because I only had the one post and follow me back 
that meant a lot. And so I'm gonna just stay grounded and really just all the superficial stuff I'm going to stay away from. I'm going to make sure because you can get lost in it and maybe I got lost in my passion, what I was doing, and then the responses that I was getting, the fo the followings. Maybe I got lost somewhere along the line in that. And so I want to unlost, unget lost in that. When I went home, I had people that was coming up to me like, hey, Fashion she, I follow you. And that's a good feeling, right? And so I don't know. I think a part of this was just like a wake up call to that. Don't put too much into the superficial stuff or the um what do you call it the accolades or whatever stay true to you stay true to who you are focus on you all of that just comes naturally but don't make that your why or don't get obsessed in that don't get the star struck or the star don't don't get don't go down that path and so listen I am back and I am going to focus to more time on YouTube because YouTube was secondary to me and now um, now YouTube is going to be more of my home and I've been saying if you guys have been watching my videos you've been hearing me saying I really love it here I really love it here and so I'm here thank you guys for watching thanks for all of the support questions put them below I'll answer um, and until next time